Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we've got another story time with Uncle Ryan. We're going to be reading The Complete Battleship Bismarck by Garske, Doolin, and Jurens. Uh, this book uh, is one I picked up, I was going to say not too long ago, but it takes forever to read. Look at that sucker. Uh, I picked up a couple months ago and uh, I wanted to make you guys aware of it now because Naval Institute Press that printed and sells this book is down to their last couple of copies and uh, when they sell out, that's it. Uh, so if you're interested in this book, and I'll tell you why you should be interested in this book in a little bit, but if you're interested in this book, make sure you pick it up now. There's a link in the description to Naval Institute Press. Um, this tome is absolutely massive. Um, listen to this. We measure a lot of things here on the battleship in curators. Um, I, I think we should be measuring books by weight and not by page count or anything like that. Uh, Bismarck was operational for about a week. Like she, she did one combat uh, cruise that was about a week long. This book is one pound of information per day that the ship was in combat. Right. That is tremendous value right there, folks. In today's video, uh, because we don't have time to talk about everything covered in this book, I'm just going to compare the 15-inch guns of the Bismarck-class battleships to the 16-inch guns of the Iowa-class battleships. The Bismarck-class and the Iowa-class are really interesting uh, and something... Uh, we all know that uh, the Bismarck-class was supposed to be 35,000 tons, like that's one of those things that everybody implicitly knows and the Germans built them intentionally above that average. Uh, what this book argues is that at the time when she is being designed and built, the escalator clause for the Second London Naval Treaty already exists, which would allow battleships to go from 35 to 45,000 tons. And so, the Germans, knowing that Japan was not going to sign the treaty and the escalator clause would be triggered, intentionally build Bismarck at 45,000 tons, making her treaty legal. And that essentially means that there are only two classes of battleships that are built at that 45,000 ton level, the Bismarcks and the Iowas, which makes them a really, really good comparison and a more equal fight uh, than we've talked about previously. And, and these two ships are relatively comparable in size and, and combat value. Uh, and Iowa has one more gun turret, and Iowa has a few knots more of speed, uh, depending on where the ships have relatively similar armor thickness within a couple of inches of each other on the belt or the deck or the turret base or blah, 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 blah. They, they are remarkably similar ships, and that's because they're actually designed at the same weight whereas most other battleships that fight during World War II are in that 35,000 ton roll. The only major difference then between these ships is that the Bismarck class is designed just a few years earlier than the Iowa's. So let's look specifically at their guns and how those systems compare. First off, I took notes for this one. So the easy stuff first. Bismarck's guns were 380 millimeter guns, whereas the Iowa class had 406 millimeter guns. Uh, specifically, Bismarck's are 38 centimeters, which is 14.96 inches. I'm going to refer to them as 15 inches uh, for the whole video because 14.96. But uh, many countries that are building 15 inch armed battleships do 38.2 or 382 or 383 uh, millimeters to get there. Is this any sort of uh, difference in combat power? No, not really. Uh, and Bismarck's guns are 51.6 repeating calibers long, whereas an Iowa-class battleship has 50 caliber guns. So in this case, caliber is a measure of length. Uh, so for a 16 inch 50 caliber gun, that gun is 16 inches wide and 50 calibers long. And a caliber here is 
a multiplication of the diameter of the barrel. So 16 times 50 gives you the length of that gun, or roughly 68 feet. Uh, and Bismarck's guns are 51.6 repeating calibers long, whereas an Iowa-class battleship has 50 caliber guns. So there's a one inch difference. The, the calibers are almost identical. Uh, the, the lengths of the barrels are, are very similar. Um, both the Bismarck and the Iowas are the only classes of battleships completed with these guns for their respective navies, although they were intended to be used on other classes. Bismarck's guns are designed in 1934 and enter service in 1939. Uh, the Iowa-class guns are designed in 1939 and enter service in 1943. So there's a couple of years difference there. Bismarck's gun ends up weighing 244,700 and some change pounds. Compared to, an Iowa-class gun is 267,900 and some change pounds. So remarkably similar on weight. Uh, an Iowa-class gun is 816 inches long. Bismarck-class gun is 772 inches long. So you should be seeing that there are just a ton of similarities here. So for reference, one of Bismarck's gun barrels weighs about as much as 31,000 of this book. Big difference here is in rate of fire. An Iowa-class battleship has a rate of fire of one round every 30 seconds, or two rounds per minute. A Bismarck class has a rate of fire of 2.3 to 3 rounds per minute, depending on the source that you read. There are a lot of sources out there that say that the Bismarcks have the fastest rate of fire of um, any battleship during World War II, particularly with a major caliber gun. There are ships out there with 11 and 12 inch guns. Uh, so those numbers are often repeated. You'll see them all over the place. We'll talk about them and... Uh, what they actually meant in combat a little bit later, because the Bismarcks were no more achieving a rate of fire of one round every 20 seconds than the Iowas were one round every 30 seconds. But we'll get to that in a moment. The major difference between these ships, what sets Bismarck apart in particular, German battleships in general, is that their powder charge is a combination of bagged powder and case powder. The Iowa class and most other battleships use exclusively bag powder. Uh, again, that is important for the rate of fire, and we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Uh, both ships have several different projectile types, but in general, they've got an armor piercing and a high capacity round, or high explosive, uh, as it's called for the Germans. Uh, so the German armor piercing round is 1,764 pounds. And it's the same weight for their HE rounds. On German ships, their rounds are about the same size. On American ships, the AP round is 2,700 pounds, and the HC round is 1,900 pounds. And there is a size difference between the two. So you can see the difference here between this shell that's armor-piercing and six feet tall versus this shell that's high capacity and only five feet tall. The American fast battleships were designed with shell hoists that could handle the six foot tall shells, but the older American battleships like the Colorado class could only handle the five foot tall shells. So to ease supply chain issues, the Navy only deployed the five foot tall uh, high capacity rounds. They didn't develop a larger one. So it means that there's a weight difference. What does this mean for the uh, explosive ability of these two shells. The German armor-piercing shell has a 41.4 pound burster charge in it. The American has a 40.9 pound burster charge. So even though the German shell is significantly lighter, um, by over a thousand pounds, its burster charge is one pound heavier. Again, uh, it's remarkable how similar those two numbers are. In the high capacity rounds, the Germans use a 141 and a half pound burster charge, the Americans 153.6 pound burster charge. So again, uh, there, there's only a 200 pound difference here in the total weights of the shells, 
but the Verster charges are remarkably similar. Uh, the German shells are somewhere between 65.8 and 68.8 inches tall versus American shells that are between 64 and 72 inches tall. So again, the American shells are a little bit bigger. Uh, American powder charge is 660 pounds. A German gun uses a four charge that is in bags that is 219.4 pounds and a main charge that is 248 pounds of propellant for a total of 467.4 pounds, uh, plus the weight of the actual brass cartridge itself, which is another 154 pounds. So the, the total weight that they're ramming is very similar to the total weight that the Americans are ramming, but there's more propellant uh, behind the Americans. The muzzle velocities, Remember, these are uh, very high caliber guns, so you would expect high muzzle velocities. You get that with the German gun. Uh, a new gun would have a muzzle velocity of about 2,690 feet per second, while a new gun for the Americans has a muzzle velocity of about 2,500 feet per second. It's actually kind of low for such a high caliber gun. Uh, the lighter high capacity round is 2,690 feet per second, so identical to the German uh, new gun. So that's pretty incredible. The, the American armor-piercing shell, because of its weight and size, is significantly slower than you would expect, but these two ships, remember 50 calibers versus 51.66 uh, calibers, have identical new gun muzzle velocities. So again, I'm just struck by how similar these two guns are. The German guns have a barrel life of uh, right around 200 rounds. The American barrel life is about 300 rounds. The German shells are high velocity. That tends to wear away the liner more so than the lower velocity of the American AP shells. The ammunition stowage per gun, American battleships will hold about 130 shells. Uh, Bismarck, depending on the source that you read, says anywhere from 100 to 130 per gun. In fact, they could carry about 108 rounds per gun in the shell stowage in the barbettes. They carried additional rounds inside the turrets and some other places around the gun besides sh shell storage, which makes it appear that Bismarck sailed with about 125 rounds per gun on her mission. Uh, remember, she was doing an extended commerce raiding cruise, so they may have put more rounds on there than she was designed to carry. So next up, let's talk about the ranges of these two guns. Uh, at maximum range, an Iowa-class battleship has a range of about 42,000 yards, a little bit more than that. The interesting thing about that uh, is that is at an angle of 45 degrees, which is the maximum practical angle for a heavy caliber gun. The German guns only have a maximum angle of 30 degrees, which means that their maximum range is only 39,589 yards. Uh, these ranges are for brand new guns, so expecting that highest possible muzzle velocity, uh, and for the armor-piercing shells in particular. So uh, for high-capacity shells, the American gun could shoot even further since they're a lighter shell going at a higher velocity. However, that uh, 45 degree angle makes all the difference for the American ships. The American ships are expected to fight in the vastness of the Pacific where you're going to have a lot of sunny days where you can see targets at extreme ranges. And so this shows the ship is built to American expected uh, combat areas and doctrine, whereas Bismarck is built to German expected areas and uh, doctrine. They're expecting to fight in the North Sea where it's going to be miserable weather, radar isn't a huge factor in fire control when the ship is being designed, so they decide not to bother to add the extra weight in making their ship's guns elevate another 15 degrees because they can't use that range anyway. And this plays out in Bismarck's service life. Uh, her battle with uh, Hood takes place at about 11 miles, not the 20 nautical miles that she can actually fire her guns. Um, Likewise, her final engagement is at extremely close range. 
She does lob some shells at extreme long range to try and create, keep uh, some of the British ships at bay while she's being pursued, such as the cruisers Norfolk and Suffolk and later the battleship Prince of Wales, and even to try and drive off some of the uh, other British ships that are attacking her. But those are never expected to be shots that are going to hit the target. That's just like, hey guys, stay back. I'm, I have still have teeth. So Bismarck has slightly shorter range. It's about a mile and a half less range. But that is a design function that's probably, uh, if they had been able to elevate the guns to 45 degrees, you'd see very similar performance. Remember, we've got similar shell weights and similar uh, velocities here. Really interesting thing is time of flight. Remember the German guns are significantly lighter, their armor-piercing shells, so their time of flight out around maximum range uh, is about 70 seconds. Whereas the American time of flight out at maximum range is 95 seconds. This means that the Germans are going to have a simpler fire control solution. Their target is going to have less time to move while their shells are in the air. Um, that ends up not being an issue. The Americans accept the lower velocity for the higher shell weight because they've got these computers that can aim the guns effectively. So, what do the Americans buy with that extra um, shell weight? Let's look at the penetration. At point-blank range, an Iowa class can penetrate 32.62 inches of armor plate, whereas at point-blank range, the German gun with the lighter shell can only penetrate 29.23 inches. So the extra shell weight buys the American gun uh, an extra three inches of penetration at point-blank range. Uh, let's look at uh, close to maximum range. For plunging fire, the Germans firing at uh, 38,000 yards, is about, which is about 19 miles, can plunge a shell through about 6.7 inches of deck armor, uh, which, in theory, would defeat the main deck armor of an Iowa-class battleship. In practice, it's got to punch through additional decks, uh, so it probably wouldn't work, but that's uh, pretty good in theory. At 40,000 yards, an Iowa-class battleship shell is punching through 11.26 inches of deck armor. At that range, an Iowa-class battleship shell is able to penetrate 11.26 inches of deck armor, which is significantly more than any battleship has. So let's look at uh, something more average. At about 20,000 yards, a German projectile uh, will punch through 16 and a half inches of belt armor or about three inches of deck armor. And uh, that is roughly the range at which Bismarck is believed to have defeated Hood's armor. So you, you can see that uh, that projectile can defeat pretty much any belt armor, probably won't defeat most battleships deck armor if it's plunging. Uh, at about 20,000 yards, an Iowa class can punch through 20 inches of belt armor uh, or about four inches of deck armor, so a little bit more penetration. Uh, at, and at four inches, you do start to defeat some mid-level battleships' uh, deck armor. So again, uh, we're seeing performance that is relatively similar. The American ship is firing a slightly heavier shell at slightly longer ranges, uh, and so it's getting slightly better penetration. So finally, let's look at the survivability of these gun turrets as they appear on these ships. An Iowa class has a 17-inch turret face over a 2.5-inch backer. Uh, the German battleships have a 14-inch turret face, so significantly thinner. Uh, American ships, 9.5 inches on the side. Uh, German battleships, 8.7 on the side. Uh, American battleships, 12 inches on the rear. German battleships, 12.6 on the rear. Uh, this rear armor isn't really protecting anything because it's your face pointing at the target. The rear is just to counterweight the rest of the, uh, the turret's weight. And then the roof is uh, 7.25 inches for the Iowas, uh, 5.1 inches 
for the German battleship. And it's worth pointing out uh, that while the American battleships are pretty much slab-sided with a flat roof, the German battleships have uh, an angled face and then a roof and then a straight side. Uh, so their thicknesses are more or less cut in half on the upper angled part based on the slab-sided part uh, before you get to the, the roof itself. So again, uh, this armor reflects the ships, one, being armored against their own size guns and their penetrating ability, and two, the nation's doctrine. The Iowas have significantly more roof armor because they're expecting aerial threats, because they're expecting to get into longer range battles with plunging fire. Uh, the German battleship does not. They're expecting to get into close range brawls. Another thing to keep in mind here is Iowa class battleships, guns, rotate on hourglass shaped rollers. They are hourglass shaped so that they stay in a specific track. Meanwhile, the German battleship guns use actual ball bearings as their rollers. Uh, this means that the ball bearings are less able to keep the shell in its track. And uh, if something damages them or they get ground flat, they stop being as effective. Another thing to keep in mind is the Iowa-class battleships have their shell rooms above their powder magazines. The German battleships follow um, more of the European style where their powder magazines are above their shell rooms. The powder is significantly more volatile, so on the American ships, it's stored deeper in the ship. Uh, neither German battleship suffers a magazine detonation because of their heavy armor, so it doesn't really play out. But in theory, I'm kind of uh, in preference to the Americans storing the powder lower. Uh, and finally, Iowa-class battleships only have as many shells in the turrets as they are firing. The German battleships can store somewhere between five and 10 rounds in each turret. So that is extra projectiles above your armored citadel on the German ships. Again, this doesn't seem to play out uh, in combat as any sort of issue, but uh, it's interesting that the American Navy has moved away from this, but the German Navy is still using it. So the final thing to talk about here in the comparison is that the uh, rate of fire for the German ships. They have a significantly higher rate of fire because they use a case for their guns. On paper, at least. This means that you're reducing the number of bags that you have to transport. According to some sources, that means that the guns can fire every 20 seconds. In reality, it seems like the sources that are being referenced, and remember, uh, because of the fire bombings, many of the original German sources uh, relating to the Bismarck class are lost. We, we don't have full information, and because the ships are not extant above water anymore. Uh, so we do have very good extant sources for, say, New Jersey, uh, more so than for Bismarck. I will never be able to sit in her shell ring and uh, tell you about her uh, turrets live. Uh, in reality, it seems like the sources are saying that the shell hoists can supply the turrets with one projectile every 20 seconds. That doesn't necessarily mean that the guns can be loaded that quickly. Uh, at the end of the day, because of the fewer number of powder bags, the German guns can definitely be loaded quicker. However, in practice, it seems like neither the Iowa class nor the uh, Bismarck class ever fired their guns that rapidly. Uh, for example, during her battle with Hood, uh, Bismarck fires approximately uh, one round every 60 some odd seconds, which is roughly what you see in New Jersey when she's firing at uh, the Mayakazi during the uh, Battle of Truck Lagoon. So while they, in theory, have significantly higher rates of fire, you fire a projectile and you wait to see if it hits the target so that you can adjust fire and fire another one. So both of these ships are firing about uh, one round per minute in combat. Remember the, the time of flight it takes the projectiles to get there. 
Uh, so at the end of the day, although I'm very harsh on the Bismarck class battleships, it is remarkable how similar in size they are to the Iowa class and how similar their guns performance is to the Iowa class. The Iowa class guns are slightly bigger and they're firing a slightly heavier shell, which means that they can do slightly more damage. They're, they're definitely the better gun, but despite being one size smaller, the German guns come remarkably close. And uh, where they really fall flat is in the aspects that are uh, designed as such for doctrinal reasons. They cannot elevate as high as they could to get the maximum effective range. There, there's a chance that those German guns would outrange the American guns if they could elevate to 45 degrees. But it doesn't matter because the Germans didn't have fire control systems or training or doctrine uh, that called for that because of their expected areas of operations. What would it look like if in 1943, when New Jersey is operating in the Atlantic, Tirpitz had sortied and the two ships had met? You're going to have to wait until a future video to see that. What do you think about the comparison of these guns? Let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, if you already own a copy of Battleship Bismarck, or what I refer to as the Bismarck Bible from Naval Institute Press, uh, because it is thicker and heavier than any Bible you've ever seen, uh, with better illustrations too, I might add, the, then uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I've been very impressed with this book so far, and it really has increased uh, my knowledge of the Bismarck class battleships. Uh, my favorite part is probably something we'll, we'll also cover in a future video where uh, there's a whole section at the back where they analyze the wreck of Bismarck and are able to come up with some new theories about the ship's final action. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support from the Naval Institute. Uh, and if you guys would like to support the museum and our YouTube channel, Remember to like, share, and subscribe so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.